Hey guys, uh, before I get started, I want to give thanks to our Lord. Uh, and I want to ask you for your prayers. My wife was in a car accident today. So uh, I left work like at nine o'clock, you know. Uh, and I, she's okay. Praise the Lord. Uh, everything is good. And um, she's just resting now because uh, we have a mission at church this evening that we're looking forward to. Uh, we don't want to miss. And uh, so I figured I'll take this opportunity to make this quick video uh, in response to a bunch of comments I got about a post I made. Um, but uh, not only pray for my wife, um, but pray for the family that hit her. It was a young man. I guess he wasn't paying attention. She was stopped at a red light on her way to daily mass. And uh, I guess this guy was flicking around his phone or something. And he smashed into her. He had this big brand new SUV that had to be uh, towed away. She has this little 20 year old uh, Volkswagen buggy that just got some scratches on the back, uh, believe it or not. Uh, but her but her back is jacked up. So I pray that uh, we actually, this priest tonight is actually uh, doing a healing service tomorrow night. He's gonna be here three nights, a really gifted speaker. Um, and he has oil, uh, they call St. Joseph oil. I don't know a whole lot about it, but he said it's from a church in Canada, and they actually have like, uh, from a you know, Catholic parish in Canada, I forget the name, but he says they hang up, uh, they have hung up on the wall crutches and wheelchairs that people have been healed, uh, getting anointed with this oil. So God still heals, He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So well, we're gonna ask for this uh, anointing on my wife and uh, healing uh, and a testimony for God to the unbelievers that God still is alive. Um, and then pray for this family that hit us because there was like a four month old baby and thank God it was in a car seat. It seems like they were okay, but you never know afterwards, you know, uh, so pray because I'm going to say some things that a lot of Catholics are going to disagree with me as usual. <laughs> uh, but you'll all agree with me that life is sacred and babies, whether born or unborn are the most innocent and precious human beings on the planet. Uh, and there's going to be some never Francis Catholics <laughs> that will agree with Pope Francis on this point where he said, abortion is the gravest of mortal sins. So I'm telling you this because I'm going to ask you a favor. Please, if you're buying or selling real estate, go to realestateforlife.org and support the only pro-life Catholic real estate company that I know of. And I know the owner personally, and he's a devout Catholic, the most pro-life guy I ever met in my life. And uh, he's doing this for God, you know, he's doing this for the unborn babies. So please, if you're buying or selling real estate, at least, at least check them out and talk to them. Realestateforlife.org. Now, um, so <laughs> I, I actually had two videos, apologetic videos, uh, to convince Protestants and two two big things that convinced me. I was a Protestant for 30 years and, and these are two things that convinced me and I was planning on doing it. But I put up a comment, um, you know, commending four men on YouTube uh, for, you know, talking out against all the schismatic talk you hear or schismatic. Some people say schismatic, some people say schismatic. I say schismatic, uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. <laughs> but, um, and I just put up four men's names. You can look in the community board and see who they are. These are four men. I know two of them. I'll, I'll just say their names. It was Michael Voris from Church Militant that I met because uh, we did a video together. And then we talked on the phone. Uh, and um, John Edwards from Catholic for Rednecks, we did a video together. And we constantly we text. Like He texts me more than my wife, I told him. <laughs> but he's a great guy. And then, uh, so I know these two guys. Uh, the other two I don't know, but I, I watch their channel and I love them, uh, would be Matt Frad from Pines of Aquinas and Michael Lofton from Reason and Theology. And I just wanted to commend them because, um, you know, believe it or not, to defend unity and to defend Pope Francis, you take a lot of arrows. I mean, you look in their comments and there's more negatives than, than positive when they do this. Um, you know, it's more popular to dispatch the Pope. It's, it's a strange time we live in when... It's more popular for Catholics to bash our Pope than to defend our Pope. You know, I was a Protestant for 30 years bashing your Pope. <laughs> now he's my Pope. I'm going to defend him. I just, I don't know. 
call me radical, <laughs> call me a traditional, but you know, it's Catholic tradition to defend the church and defend the faith. Many martyrs went to their death defending the Pope and defending the church. But um, anyhow, some Catholics don't like, don't respond <laughs> to, uh, to comments. And I always try to, you know, right now I'm only working 12 hours a week so I could do it. But I don't know how much I can say publicly, but my company's in trouble. That's public knowledge. My company that I work for, Bang Energy, is in bankruptcy. And it goes on the auction block next month. So I'll probably be in a different job, <laughs> I would imagine, soon. And most jobs I've had, uh, I work 14 to 16 hours. So I'll, I'll be responding less to the comments. Uh, not because I don't like to, believe me. I want to respond immediately when I see a comment, <laughs> uh, but just I won't have the time, you know. So anyway, um, I've heard I heard two Catholic YouTubers that I really like a lot say they get really bothered by the comments, and uh, obviously uh, they've never been to boot camp <laughs> because they said they can't believe how mean people could be, and I'm like, you know, John Catholic for Rednecks, he was in Marine boot camp, I was in Navy boot camp, and trust me, what you guys say when you insult us in the comments is nothing i mean it's funny because i was in the regular navy but uh i heard this navy seal talking about going through buds and he said uh the biggest guys are always the first the big you know muscle guys are always the first guys to quit you know because it's all volunteer you can quit so like 180 guys will go through and usually like 150 or 160 will quit and he said the big muscle bound guys are the first to quit. And I heard this before from other SEALs I talked to. And I always assumed it was because their muscles were so big, the oxygen level, it was, you know, it was harder for them to uh, uh, keep up with the strenuous training. But what this guy said was, you know, they just weren't used to be calling names. <laughs> they, weren't, they weren't used to being belittled constantly. He goes, I grew up, I was a nerd in high school. I was always picked on, so... You know, to me, it was just another day. It was just another day with these guys screaming at me. Obviously, he was physically fit, but he wasn't a tough guy in high school. He, he actually made a video how this how this nerd made it through uh, Navy Buds, which is the SEALs basic underwater demolition training. You know, it's like the Navy SEALs basic training. So anyway, these two guys, uh, these two uh, YouTubers were talking, and one said, I don't even look at the comments anymore. <laughs> It's just, they're so disturbing. And the other one said, well, these people are crazy. I'm going to review them before I post them. Me, I just let them go. Because number one, I don't even know how to do that, reviewing it and posting. And number two, I, I like to see what people are thinking so I can respond and make videos accordingly. So today I'm actually going to read a comment. And it was based on me saying, I commend these four guys for sticking up for unity when it's popular to be a schismatic these days. So... We're going to go right into it. And uh, again, uh, if you could just remember to pray for my wife, pray for um, the guy who hit me, and you can pray for me to get a job, but I live in the great state of Florida. Jobs are flourishing. I'm sure I'll have a job. I have a CDL. You know, I'm not afraid to work hard, so I'll have a job. And if you want to come to the great state of Florida, go to realestateforlife.org. But anyhow, so this is the comment. Uh, sorry for the long introduction, but you know me. This is what I do. You ask me the time, I'll bill you a clock. <laughs> so, uh, so this is, I'm just commending four guys for not getting in on the Pope bashing and the, uh, you know, schism talk. These guys explicitly, I'm sure, I know other people aren't for schism on YouTube, but these guys explicitly came out and called schism or schism a sin. I mean, straight up. Like I said, there's a lot of other guys here I know that aren't for it, but these guys were bold enough to say it. So I, I give him, so this was the comment from some guy, Dino Valente. Sounds like an Italian. Sounds like a guy I probably knew in Jersey. Uh, maybe it is. <laughs> so uh, what is worse according to your understanding? So he's asking me, what's my opinion? What's worse? Attending a TLM at a SSPX chapel, yet praying for the Pope and defending the papacy, or attending a new mass parish where one knows the priest does not accept Humane Vitae, where 90% of the parishioners genuflex towards the crucifix behind the altar and not towards the tabernacle hidden to the side, where one knows there is a good possibility of the priest giving bad advice to one's children regarding the sixth commandment, adultery, and so on, where the probability is high that that same priest 
doesn't believe in papal infallibility, yet he seems to be conf uh, seems to be obedient to his bishop. Please answer. He wants me to answer. He's saying, I'm not just writing this. I'm, I'm, I'm asking you a question. I respect that. A lot of guys are very, that, that was a respectful question. He gave me his opinion and asked. Some guys are vile. <laughs> I'm not going to even bother read, give them the credit and read them, them guys. This guy was respectful and asked an honest question that deserves an honest answer. And I love this shirt. My son bought this shirt because he knows this is one of my favorite Bible verses. Iron sharpens iron. Proverbs 17 it says, iron sharpens iron like men sharpen men. So as men of God, we got to ask the tough questions to each other. We got to, you know, we got to be, I always give the uh, example of the Godfather smacking Joey Fontaine when he's crying. It's like, hey, man up, stop acting like a little girl. <laughs> you know, sometimes we got to, you know, we got to talk straight and tough with one another and we sharpen each other. We're not degrading. We're not bashing. We're Everything we do, we should be edifying and building up. But sometimes, you know, love is tough. You got to be tough, you know. If you see a man committing adultery, you don't say, oh, it's okay. No, you say, brother, dude, you're committing a mortal sin. You need to get to confession. And you need to stop doing what you're doing right now. Or I'm going to intervene. You know, tough love. So I respect tough questions. I'll never delete your... Sometimes they get deleted and people get mad at me. And I made that mistake. I... I uh, did, uh, I wrote something on Matt Frads and I thought he deleted it and I publicly said why I thought he deleted it and he said, brother, I didn't delete you. So sometimes fate, YouTube will delete you for whatever reason. I don't know why. But anyhow, I'm going to answer his question. So attending at TLM at an SSPX. Now, first I want to say, to me, traditional lap mass Catholics are not the same as SSPX Catholics. I've had a lot of Catholics on my show that I admire greatly, that I've learned a lot from, that know a lot more about the faith than me, that are devout, holy men of God, that love the Catholic Church, love the Lord, know the Bible well, and they prefer the traditional Latin Mass. And we never, we didn't even discuss it on the program because there's nothing to discuss. We're both Catholics, you know? Whereas SSPX, they use the traditional Latin Mass as a wedge to say, we're superior. You guys are inferior. Your Mass is no good. And they use it to d divide us rather than to unite us. So I'm not, that, that premise is wrong. I mean, this whole question is kind of like a loaded question. Like they would ask Trump, when did you stop beating your wife? So then if you answer the question, you're answering a false premise. So, um, No. I'm not going to give them that. Traditional Latin Mass Catholics are not the same as SSPX. Just because SSPX prefers the Latin Mass. There's a lot of Catholics who prefer, prefer the traditional Latin Mass and do not accept your schismatic teaching. And what's their schismatic teaching? Well, Kennedy Hall, one of the spokesmen, not official, I'm sure, I don't think he's like has any official capacity, but he's bold enough and honest enough to tell you in his video SSPX is his boys. That's a, a direct quote from him, if I'm not, or my people. And he said in one of his recent videos, he would rather die than ex eat, receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ in a Novus Order Mass. He said he would rather die. And that's a teaching of SSPX. They tell you to commit a mortal sin. Don't go to Mass if you can't get to a Latin Mass. They are telling their people to commit a mortal sin. Because if you miss mass on purpose, that is a mortal sin. So they're not just saying like my Latin mass friends that I've had on the show. I prefer the Latin mass. I think it's more reverent. I think it's more holy. I, I, I feel more um, in tune with God when I'm at a Latin mass than Novus Order. They're not saying that. They're saying the, Latin, the, the Novus Order is bad. It's a bad mass. You know, and Taylor Marshall won't come out and say he's SSPX. He has, a, he has another, he has a different angle. What he'll say is, um, you know, I'm just a traditional Catholic. Uh, I know the Novus Order is valid, but, and then he'll give you a million reasons to be afraid to go to one. <laughs> and he'll go on, he'll go on a never, a, you know, I call him the Never Francis. He'll go on a Never Trump show. Uh, Glenn Beck, who now all of a sudden he's all Trump, Trump, Trump. But I remember when Glenn Beck, when Trump was running, he was, he was, causing Trump a lot of headaches, 
causing a lot of conservatives not to vote for Trump. And he said he would rather Hillary Clinton become president than vote for Donald Trump. Now, all of a sudden, he's a big Trumper, but a lot of people don't remember. I remember, you know. But anyway, that's kind of getting off track. But Glenn Beck is also a Mormon. Although his show isn't a Mormon show per se, he's a Mormon. And just like when I was a Protestant, no matter what I did, I was always trying to win Catholics to the Protestant faith. Mormons are the same way. Mormon teaching is the Catholic Church is an apostasy. So Taylor Marshall goes on a Mormon show, Glenn Beck, and says, the new mass is bad. It's a bad mass. And the Pope, you know, he starts calling Pope Francis the enemy and the devil, you know, and starts saying all this crazy stuff. Watch, watch the video. It's ridiculous. So he's kind of like the never Trumpers. They'll say, oh, I'm a Republican. I just wouldn't vote for Trump. And they'll go on all the, all the liberal talk shows and bash Trump and say, I'm a, I'm a Republican. And this is what they do. I'm a devout Catholic. I'm a pious, holy Catholic. But Francis is bad. The new mass is bad. So I don't buy the premise when he says TLM mass and SSPX. So, okay, so the SSPX prefer the, the TLM. But they're a small percentage of Latin mass goers. They're a small percentage. And since their existence, they haven't been around that long, since their existence, every pope during their existence has called them schismatic. Starting with Saint Pope John Paul II, Pope Benedict, and Pope Francis. And, you know... When I was a Protestant, the liberal, the liberal Christians, the liberal Protestants uh, would try and take scripture and twist it to mean what they say, what they believe it. You know, it's called eisegesis. They would take scripture and put into it the meaning they wanted to mean rather than exegete it, exegetically reading the Bible, pulling out the meaning of the verse. So they would eisegete the Bible in such a way that they would tell you, see, look, homosexuality is no longer a sin. It was just in the Old Testament. But if you read it exegetically, you could prove them wrong. Now, these SSPX guys that I hear and I meet, they don't know the Bible very well. Even a lot of these rad trad guys that, uh, you know, that aren't SSPX schismatics, they don't know the Bible well either. So what they do is they'll take papal statement, councils, rip them out of context to mean what they want it to mean. When three popes straight up says they're schismatic. So no, I would not attend an SSPX chapel because they are schismatics and when i left protestantism i accepted the authority of the church the first c the pope and the hierarchy so that's question number one the other ones will be quicker <laughs> for me to answer or go to a new mass where the priest does not accept humane vitae i've never heard a priest and i've never heard a novice order priest say they don't accept that. I've never heard it. I, I've, I've never met a priest that believes it. If I did hear a priest say it, I would report him to his bishop and I wouldn't go to his mass. But I've never heard it. So that's a red herring. You know, that's that's untrue. 90% uh, of the parishioners genuflect towards the crucifix. I've only been, I've been back to the Catholic Church seven years. I've never seen a parishioner not genuflect to the tabernacle. Every parishioner I've ever seen genuflect is always genuflecting to the tabernacle. Now, if I did happen to see someone not genuflecting correctly, at a brother, as a brother, you know, iron sharpens iron, out of love, I would explain to them what they're doing is wrong. And, that, and there's so many, I don't know about the SSPX, you know, this little cult, they just got all their little people, you know, they're, they're enclosed, but the Novus Order, there's a revival. We have tons of evangelicals. There's an evangelical exodus. And in fact, one ex-evangelical that I had on here, Dr. Boma, wrote an excellent book that I highly recommend, Evangelical Exodus. So we're getting, in, my, in my church, we have so many, we have Baptist ministers, Lutherans, Pentecostals, Church of Christ. We have so many ex-evangelicals coming in. So it, they might not know, our, you know, some things and make a mistake like I did. You know, I always wear a hat and I knew not to wear a hat in mass, but we were doing something at night and we were walking towards the sanctuary and one of the ladies said well we'll get that hat off and, oh i said oh, i'm sorry it didn't even occur to me because i was a new i was new i wasn't even through rcia yet you know one time my wife was in daily mask and she hadn't gone through rcia yet either and they said the our father and she reached out to hold the woman's hand next to her and the sister said no 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 that's protestant you know we you know we we pray like this when we do the our father and eventually we learned that and we learned it from our deacon says it periodically you know 
The only one that holds our hands up is the priest. We pray like this because we were directed our prayers to the priest who sent them up to heaven. You know, and that made sense. So, um, you know, one time when we first went back, my son was chewing gum. And the lady said, no, no, you can't chew gum in the sanctuary. You know, he was young and he, he said, okay, sorry about that. Took it out and he learned. He's never chewed gum again. So just because someone is doing something wrong doesn't mean their intention is wrong. They're learning, you know. The, when there's revival going on, when things are happening, I don't know what's going on in your SSPX uh, little cult churches, but in the Novus Order, they, people are getting saved. People are coming to the Lord. People are converting. There's conversions happening. People are leaving evangelicalism in, in droves. It's like an army of us. I'm one of them. So we don't know everything. So maybe we're not perfect yet. You know, and you are. So, you know, I always say you find the perfect church. Don't go to it because you ruin it. <laughs> so some people think their church, their parish is perfect. Um, what else? The priest giving bad advice to children regarding adultery. I don't know any priest that would give that bad advice saying it was okay to commit adultery. Um, and then... Uh, he says, and they really don't believe in proper infallibility, but they act like they do. Also, now you know their heart. <laughs> I'm not going to judge their heart. You know, I go to Mass, and every Mass, I'm touched deeply where I cry. I'm a crier, you know. You punch me in the face, I'm not going to cry. But when I see the body of flesh in Christ, when I see the body and blood of Jesus Christ, and I know not only did he die for my sins while I was yet a wretched sinner, that he wants such an intimate personal relationship. He, he's allowing me to eat his flesh and drink his blood. I cry. And, you know, but I listen to the church's teaching that we find right here in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 23. Uh, I'll read it to the end. For I received from the Lord that I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he was when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the chalice after supper, saying, This chalice is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the chalice, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. That's what I'm going to church for. That's what I'm going to mass for. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of profaning the body and blood of the Lord. Let a man examine everybody in the church and making sure they do everything right. No. St. Paul says, let a man examine himself. Himself. And so eat of the bread and drink of the cup. You know, I'm too busy examining my own heart. I'm not watching everybody, see, making sure everybody does everything right. That's between them and the Lord. You know? You know, I hear, again, you guys talk about the Novus Order... And, and you describe a mass I've never been to. And that's all I've been to. So apparently you're hearing things from guys on YouTube that hate the Novus Order telling you lies about it. But I'm hearing things, and you can tell me if this is wrong. I'm hearing, you go to SSPX, and everybody's dressed to the hilt. And they'll look down and let you, if you come in dressed, you know, not proper. Like some of them even have dress codes on the wall. Well, this is what the Bible says. James 2, 1 to 8 says this. My brethren, show no partiality as you hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory. For if a man with gold rings and fine clothing comes into your assembly and a poor man in shabbily clothing, shabby clothing. So if a poor guy, walk, if a guy walks in with shabby clothing, and, and from my understanding, they're not even allowed to come in with shabby clothing. <laughs> but if, if he did, um, and you pay attention to the one who wears the fine clothing, so apparently they let him in. You know, in uh, St. Paul's church, but apparently some people were judging him. So he was giving them instructions about this. If you pay attention to the one who wears the fine clothing and says, have a seat here, please. While you say to the poor man, stand, stand there or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brethren, has not God, ch God chosen those who are poor in the world to be rich in the faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to those who love him. But you have dishonored the poor man. Is it not the rich who oppress you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blaspheme the honorable name by which you are called? If you really fulfill the royal law, 
According to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You do well. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become guilty of all of it. For he who has said do not commit adultery said also do not kill. If you do not commit adultery but do kill, you'll become a transgressor of the law. So speak and act as those who are to be judged under the law of liberty. For judgment is without mercy to one who has shown no mercy. Yet mercy triumphs over judgment. And again, we see Paul giving instructions to Tim Timothy. 1 Timothy 2.9. Um, he says also that he's talking about how you should dress in church. Also, women should adorn themselves modestly. So women, I say this all the time, please dress modestly in church. My deacon said the other day, listen, uh, you know, we're deacons, we're priests, we love the Lord, but we're still men. Please dress modestly. <laughs> My wife started laughing. She's like, man, I can't believe you said that. I'm like, he's being honest. Men are men. You know? So, um, and it says uh, also that women should adorn themselves modestly and sensibly in seemly apparel, not with braided hair or gold or pearls, are costly attire. So he's not getting on people for coming in with shabby dress clothes, shabby jeans and shabby t-shirts. He's getting on people for coming in all dolled up, dressed to the hilt. So I say this because I hear so much judgment coming from SSPX, you know, I, I, and they talk about things that don't matter, that don't matter when it comes to salvation, that don't matter when it comes to worshiping the Lord, you know. Just worldly things, you know. In our reading this Sunday, our Old Testament reading, uh, 1 Samuel 16, 7, clearly says, man looks on outward appearances. God looks at the heart. And this is what I see with the SSPX. You know, they're always looking outward. Oh, this guy's doing it. You know, always outward appearance, you know. Pope Francis is healing people. Ba babies' tumors are being shrunk when he kisses their head. And they're like, well, he didn't do this properly. He didn't say that properly, <laughs> You know, it's like when Jesus, and again, I, was, I think we, I think this was on Sunday too. I, I'm getting my days confused, but the gospel of Jesus, reading where Jesus healed, where Jesus healed the blind man. And the legalists, the Pharisees, they were mad because he didn't follow the rules. He healed someone on the Sabbath. <laughs> Instead of looking at the miraculous thing that God is doing, they're looking at the rules, the rule keepers. And that's why I see so many rad trad kids leaving the rad trad movement. I see them on YouTube all the time saying they never learned how to have a relationship with God. They never learned about the love of God and the mercy of God. They never learned about the power and the supernatural of God. All they learned was rule keeping. And so a lot of them left the faith, but the ones that found the true faith left SSPX and all these other legalistic little cults. You know, like I said, I know I told you I'm gonna get people mad at me. I'm just telling you what I see. You know, I'm no scholar, and you know, I'm, I'm gonna hear about that in a minute. But I'm telling you from a guy who was a Protestant for 30 years that converted a lot of Catholics over to Protestantism, and now I'm a Catholic and I'm bringing people into the Catholic faith one on one, person on person, and I'm trying to give you guys tools to use so you can bring your family members that have left the Catholic faith back in. That's my goal here. My goal isn't to bash anybody. My goal is definitely not to divide us. And my goal this week was to do two of these really good apologetic videos. But when I have Protestant friends laughing at me, anti-Catholic friends laughing at me and telling me, Taylor Marshall and Kennedy Hall are our best evangelists that we got. And then I have honest Protestants that are like seeking and like almost got them coming over and they're like, well, I don't know, you know, your Pope is a liberal, your Pope is a socialist. I'm like, where are you hearing this? He's like, I'm hearing it from you Catholics. This is why I'm getting frustrated, you know? And, and we're going to deal with that in a second. The, uh, the other thing I get in the comments, he didn't say I'm surprised, but I get a lot of people saying, oh, the schism is the German. You know, you're talking about these Latin masks, these uh, SSPX guys in schism. And... Um, and right now, Bishop Snyder, who I don't know, you know, I've just seen him now, but a lot of people tell me he's a, he's a good bishop, but he's coming out pushing, uh, you know, pushing schism. He's saying, if you know, and again, justifying it, you know, taking all these councils and stuff and to justify schism, saying if Pope Francis takes away Latin Mass, we got to 
we got to rebel. We got to disobey them, you know, and a lot of people are giving them a platform. Maybe they're not saying I agree, but in so many ways, but by saying, yeah, you got to make a good point. You make a good point. They're, they're, they're leading people in the schism. So they always say, well, what about the German schism? I think that's a schism too, but I, I don't see anybody on YouTube saying it's a good thing. We all agree it's bad. You know, right here, the German bishops, uh, the German bishop's president rebukes Francis for criticism of the of synodal way. Uh, so Pope Francis is criticizing him. He's not on board with these guys. You know, thank God the president of our bishops in America is a solid Orthodox Catholic. And again, I meant to say this before. My guests on the show, who I consider friends that I admire, that prefer the traditional Latin mass, um... We agree, either you're orthodox or you're heterodox. <laughs> so there, there's not traditional Catholic, this Catholic, liberal. You know, either you're Catholic or you're not. And, and I look at him, my traditional Latin Mass brothers and sisters, as Catholics. They look at me, who prefer the Novus Ordo Mass, as a Catholic. And thank God we have an orthodox president. I interviewed him. If you want to see the interview, check it out. I interviewed him. Um, Archbishop Timothy Bergoglio, solid solid orthodox bishop he's our president of the united states conference of catholic bishops and uh great man i love i love this guy just talking for 30 minutes I, I fell in love with this man but their bishop apparently is he the orthodox because uh the president of their bishop and he's mad at uh pope francis because pope francis said uh their german sin away is unhelpful damagingly damaging and poison. He said they have fundamentally different views of Rome. So he's not saying their way is right. You know, he's not endorsing this as all. So what is he going to do about it? What? And then, you know, they asked me, what do I think he should do about it? Well, first, let's get this straight. I did a video about this months ago. Pope Francis warns German bishops changing teaching is not lawful and causes churches to rot and die. And he gave him a warning. Don't do it. Now, what should I think he could do? He should do well. First, he gave him the warning, and I'm sure he's praying not for a schism. He's doing everything, bending over backwards to keep unity. But this is what I think he should do. Um, Cardinal Burke, who I respect greatly, and uh, Cardinal uh, Muller, who I'm not real familiar with, gave this statement. I'm just going to read it to you because this is what I think needs to be done. So, what I expect to be done, Pope Francis warned them. Now they outright disobeyed him, so I'm guessing he's going to discipline them. And how should he be disciplined? Well, Cardinal Burke is like the top canon lawyer alive. Um, when he was sick uh, with COVID, I remember my friend texted me, and she was really worried. She said, please pray for him. They put him on the ventilator, and, and we all knew back then the ventilator was a death wish. You know, the, the doctors that knew better were telling us this, but, you know. Fauci and those guys were putting everybody on ventilators. But I told him, I prayed, and I just really felt in my spirit he was going to be fine. I just, you know, I really wanted to reach out. You know, I have no way of reaching the Cardinal, but I wanted to reach out to him and say, you're going to be, I felt so strong in my spirit. And he was, he's fine. He's doing good. Praise the Lord. And this is what him and Cardinal Muller wrote. There must be a trial, and they must be sentenced, and they must be removed from their office. If they are not converting themselves and they are not accepting the Catholic doctrine. So this is what we want them to do. We want them to convert and accept Catholic doctrine. Basically, as a Protestant, we say we want them to repent. That is very sad that a majority of bishops voted explicitly against the revealed doctrine and the revealed faith of the Catholic Church and of all our Christian thinking against the Bible, the Word of God, and the Holy Scriptures, and in the apostolic tradition and the defined doctrine of the Catholic Church, the Cardinal added. Um, Muller said the lay people and the bishops who supported these resolutions at the German Sinal Way are influenced by the LGBT and woke ideology, which is materialistic and nihilistic. Amen. It is absolutely blasphemic to make a blessing about those forms of life, which is, according to the biblical and ecclesial doctrine, a sin. And he goes on and on. Just check it out. But I agree with everything they say. And Pope Francis agrees. And, and people think he doesn't. You know, it's like they, they listen to this Catholic fake news. It's like these never Trumpers 
you, you tell them, you know, Trump didn't say that and you show them and they still don't believe you. It's like these never Francis Catholics. They say, oh, he's going to bless same sex unions. He came out explicitly and said the church cannot bless same sex unions because the church cannot bless sin. That was Pope Francis who said that. You know, and also in the comments, oh, he's going to he's going to ordain women. It was Pope Francis that came out officially with an official statement, doctrine, whatever you call it, making it official. If a bishop ordains a woman, they'll both be excommunicated automatically. And it was Pope Francis. It was Pope Francis. Early on in his pontificate that told a group of Italian bishops before me, you know, Pope Benedict, Pope St. John Paul II. They would allow uh, gay men who said that they've been celibate for three years prior to enter in the seminary and they would take a vow of seminary. They would allow them in. I say, no, we cannot take a chance. We cannot take a chance. If you see a hint of femininity, do not let them in seminary. That was Pope Francis who said that. And under Pope Francis's pontificate, the worst scandal the worst crisis this church has ever seen is over the abuse of little children by wicked priests is over we've seen the lowest numbers ever since pope francis i mean at one kid being abused is horrible but in 2020 only six allegations against priests in the united states which is six too many but compare that to the southern baptist where there's hundreds Compare that to one public school district, Chicago. The city of Chicago had 6,000 or 3,000 credible accusations against Chicago public school teachers for sexually abusing children. And Pope Francis, according to journalist Jason Burry, who uh, broke the story on the Catholic sex abuse scandal, who they made the movie Spotlight based on his investigation. He's a very good investigative journal. He said Pope Francis is light years ahead of his predecessors in addressing this. And it's under control because of Pope Francis. Unlike the guy who started SSPX, who Kennedy Hall and Teller Marshall said they believe he's going to be a saint, canonize a saint one day. That guy knew homosexual predator priests. And I, I wasn't going to bring this up. I have it written down for another video I'm going to do about the great Marcel Lefebvre, the excommunicated Catholic. But uh, you can Google it. He knew, according to whistleblowers, according to two priests and the principal of the school, they warned him about a priest, a homosexual priest that he was fond of. I'm not saying Marcel Lefebvre was fay, but I don't know any straight men that are fond of gay men. Like he was very fond of this man that he promoted him. And this man committed uh, many sexual sins abuses against little children and this is all out and and then in africa all those sspx priests that were abusing kids in africa it's a horrible horrible time in the sspx and i'm not saying all sspx guys are homo predator priests but at a time when the church started to call them out and start investigating this they were silent they were silent about it why i wonder why but that's your sspx it's holier than thou and it's usually the legalists in my experience I remember Bill Gothard in Protestantism. This was like, all these people want to be holy. They started uh, the Basic Institute of Life by Bill Gothard. All different denominations following this man. And he was like, don't let your children date ever. You know, they got to ask the father if they can marry somebody. I mean, it was like really strict, legalistic. And guess what Bill Gothard got caught doing? <laughs> Abusing little kids. It's usually the legalists you got to look out for, in my experience. So I'm not saying Marcel Lefebvre was gay, but he promoted a gay priest that he was fond of based on uh, whistleblowers in the SSPX. This is all public knowledge. Church Mill did, did several great videos, gives you the names, the dates, very credible witnesses. The police and FBI believe them. And um, you know, Marcel Lefebvre was never caught doing any of this, but he was friends with these guys and promoted these guys. So I'd much rather follow my Pope who's a bouncer back in the day, and no one could call him feminine, uh, Pope Francis. And uh, anyway, it's not who's right, it's what's right that matters. And what's right is the Catholic Church. If you're Catholic, 
heed these words. Canon Law 1373. One who publicly either stirs up hostilities or hatred among the subjects against the apostolic see, the, the Pope, or against any ordinary on account of some act of ecclesiastical power or ministry. So if the Pope does something we don't like, or some bishops do something we don't like, and we incite uh, anger and hostility, uh, we, we incite subjects to disobey them, it is to be punished by interdict or by other just penalties. Look up Canon Law 1373, and you'll see a lot of YouTubers guilty of that sin. And then if the Pope doesn't discipline these German bishops the way I, I, I think he should, and I agree with Cardinal Muller and Cardinal Burke, if he doesn't do that, what do I do? I obey the Catholic Church, Canon Law 1404. The first C, the Pope, is judged by no one. I'm not going to judge him. I'm going to pray for him that he's really hearing God and he's being led. But, you know, it's frustrating to have to deal with basic Catholic theology, like not bashing our Pope. I mean, I just don't get it, you know? I just, I just don't get it. I mean, can you imagine any successful football team where the players are constantly on ESPN bashing their coach? I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. So anyway, I'm going to lose some of you guys over this. I'm sorry, but, you know, I got to speak the truth as I see it. And uh, we get a lot of hate mail, but like I said, <laughs> there, you can't say anything worse than my company commanders in boot camp has said to me. And even in school, I had some pretty rough uh, chiefs that said some pretty nasty things to me. So uh, send the arrows and uh, praise the Lord. And, and if you forget everything else I said, just remember this, stay Catholic.